It turns out you can still make contact on the last lap. Is McLaren's F1 rear wing legal? Plus, Alex Pula wins his third IndyCar championship in four years, and he almost never came over to IndyCar. <laughs> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. If you remember back to when the appeals panel upheld Austin Dillon's penalties post Richmond when he ran through Denny Hamlin as well as Joey Logano, Richard Childress was furious after that. He was stomping around, he was complaining like he was LeBron James after not getting a foul to anybody that would listen to him up to that point. And he said that NASCAR had changed the way racing would be done on the last lap overnight. They completely changed who they are. You weren't gonna be allowed to make contact anymore. They've gotten rid of the basis of what NASCAR was built on, the foundation. And he was so vehemently against what NASCAR decided, even though his grandson was very much in the wrong there. NASCAR did make the right decision as well as the appeals panel to uphold his penalties because he can't drive like that. At some point, you need to have a driving standard. Oh, well, what's the line? I'll tell you when you cross it. That situation, he crosses. In this situation, though, Richard said that Last laps had changed forever. No more contact. Well, on Sunday at Watkins Glen, we got treated to an all-time classic finish at Watkins Glen, like uh, Ambrose and Keselowski, as Lee Diffie pointed out on the broadcast. Lee Diffie, once again, phenomenal call on the last lap, contrary to what all the haters say. And yeah, you can still make contact on the last lap. What a wild concept. We all knew that you were still going to be allowed to make contact on the last lap. So... Coming to the green-white checker on the restart, SVG makes slight contact with Chris Buescher getting down into turn one. He clears Buescher up into the S's, and now he knows that, hey, Buescher has a chance to get back to me. He's probably going to put a bumper to me. Buescher typically doesn't race like that, but SVG is still learning, you know, the tendency is all these guys in the Cup Series. So on the last lap going into the bus stop, SVG is like, I got to cook it in here or else he's going to get me. And he just tried to cut it in a half an inch too early, probably. Bounces off the inside Armco right there, which then messes up his whole line through the bus stop, goes a little bit wide on exit. That allows Busher to get up alongside of him there. And then that's when all heck breaks loose in terms of the lead. They make slight contact, nothing crazy, just some door banging, which is quintessential NASCAR, right? Rubbing is racing. Door banging is what this sport was built on. The two of them drive away. Chris Buescher goes on to win the race. SVG had a shot to try to get back to him. He's not going to race that way. I mean, even over the radio before all of this happened underneath one of the cautions, um, Travis Mack says to, you know, SVG, hey, you know what you have to do if you want to. And SVG says, I'm not going to do it that way, basically, is what he was saying. And he's not wrong. Like, he doesn't race that way. And it's good to see that. It's a breath of fresh air to be like, oh, I just, you know, I, how many times we heard drivers get out of the car and they just say, I had to do what I had to do there. And it's like, you didn't have to do that. And SVG is a perfect example of this. Sometimes you make a mistake, you beat yourself, and then that allows a guy to get up alongside you. Contact with me, not that big of a deal. Very much just exactly what NASCAR is. SVG did a bit of a bump and run on him. Busher gets up alongside, door bangs him to make sure that he can clear and have space there as well. That's racing. That's racing to its core. And you didn't have to drive through somebody. Busher could have just driven right through the 16 of SVG. Didn't do it. SVG could have driven through the 17 of Chris Busher. Didn't do it. And that's refreshing to see. For once, you didn't have guys going out there and just absolutely junking each other because that's I did what I had to do. No, you don't have to do that. It's such a cop-out excuse. Don't do that. SVG, though, super happy that he's in the Cup Series. Like I said, breath of fresh air. Dude absolutely 100% gets it. He's great to the fans. He seems like he's having just a hell of a time out there. He sounds like he's having a great time. Even in defeat, he was smiling and went down and congratulated Chris Buescher on what should have been his second ever NASCAR Cup Series victory. Um, but hey, there's a reason Trackhouse is putting him in that third car next year um, over there in that 88. It's because he gives them an opportunity to win on road courses and lock themselves into the playoffs. And that's a perfect example of what we saw on Sunday because next year, this race is not in the playoffs. It will be back in the regular season. And SVG is very much going to be in contention once again to be in the playoffs because he wins on a road course. So, hey, RC can think that changes have happened in NASCAR. They haven't. Your grandson just drove over his head and, you know, got... Got his, uh, got his wrist slapped down, so it happens. Also, if you like the content that you see in video form on YouTube and TikTok, you might be interested in seeing what I have in written form. I do have a blog up and running now. You can check the link in the bio as well. Uh, it's on Substack. You don't have to pledge any money. It's free. Don't pay attention if you get a little pop-up that asks you about that. But yeah, read it, check it out. I'm planning on posting a couple times a week. Uh, just another outlet for, for my brain. Moving on to Formula One now. We don't typically talk Formula One on this channel, but I'm a huge Formula One guy, as you've probably have seen in the background here. There's some Formula One yearbook. 
books. There's uh, the obvious Lego cars over here. But on Sunday, on the streets of Baku in Azerbaijan, Oscar Piastri and McLaren picked up, well, Oscar's second one of the year, McLaren's fourth one of the year. McLaren has now taken control of the constructor standings for the first time since 2014, where they led after the first round in Australia. And boy, did things go horribly wrong after that. But for that short period in 2014, they did lead with a double podium at that point. Now they're back atop the constructor standings, haven't won a constructor's title since 1998. Feels like 98 down in Knoxville. Feels like 98 over in Woking. Should have won it in 2007, but Nigel Stephanie, Spygate, if you're not familiar with that, the BBC put out a great podcast about it. Give a listen to that. Read the Wikipedia page. Should have won in 07. They got kicked out of the championship, disqualified, so still haven't technically won one since 1998. But now they're back atop the constructor standings. But after Oscar Piastri's win on Sunday, some people are asking, is the rear wing of the McLaren legal? Why is that? Well, because when they're at speed, DRS is not activated, the corners of the wing flare up to essentially create a tiny bit of DRS, like its own little mini DRS system here. And it caught the attention of a lot of people. Now, I can't put the video on here, of course, because FOM will come in and strike it down immediately, and I'm not trying to get that, like the rapture is coming. Instead, I'll just show you some still shots here of the of the wing so this is the wing not at speed like when it has uh when they're at low speed here and you can tell that the corners of the wing are down now when it's at speed in this photo right here you can see those corners are now flared up which will allow air through creating a tiny bit of a drs system at that is it substantial uh not as substantial as opening up the entire DRS system, but it is substantial enough. I mean, a little can be a lot in certain situations, and this is definitely one of them. When you look at the Ferrari here at speed, the Ferrari does not have any openings in its rear wing like the McLaren does. Now, is it legal? Formula One's all about loopholes, right? That's what makes Formula One so great. It's how other teams interpret the rules, how one designer interprets it versus another designer. And that's what makes for very entertaining races um, and seasons. Sometimes some people get it right, like Red Bull last year and Adrian Newey and that race car lights out right this year. They started the season lights out, but now we have both McLaren, Mercedes, as well as Ferrari. So not just both, but all three of them back up into contention to win races. All, all four teams have won races this year. And it's fun because they all have different designs on their race car. Now is what McLaren doing legal? Well, you would have to assume that maybe it is because the FIA hasn't caught it yet, but I'm sure some teams are certainly going to take a deep look at it going forward. But that's one of the great things about Formula One. Now we'll have to wait and see when we get to Singapore next week if we see a similar sort of of flare up down the straightaway. But Baku does have some of the longest straightaways in Formula One. So maybe that's why we saw it there for the first time, or maybe this is the first time they attempted to do it. Either way, I love the I love the design, the thinking, and everything that goes into Formula One like this. All right, last topic of the day. Alex Plo picks up his third IndyCar championship in four seasons, back to back for the first time since Dario Franchitti did it. Pretty uneventful championship race for him in Nashville after Will Powers' belts came loose like he was AJ Allmendinger at the Indy 500. And he was five laps down, I guess, basically early on in that race. And it was over from the beginning. Barring Polo getting wrapped up in something at the very beginning of that race and getting knocked out, this was always going to be Alex Polo's championship. Um, to win like it was going to be a lot for willpower to try to have to um capitalize and and win this title regardless for alex blow this is massive three championships in four years um he had three wins this season but this is a guy that was never on the indy car path he was racing super formula over in japan and told the honda guys like hey if you ever have an opportunity for me in indy car let me know i'd be interested in doing it so dale coin rings him up and is like hey i have a seat open for the 2020 season do you want to come over and race it and Pelot's like yeah sure Comes over and races that with Dale Coyne. And if it wasn't for Dale Coyne bringing Alex Pillow over from Super Formula, we never know how good Alex Pillow actually is. And now because Dale brought him over, he goes to Ganassi in his second year. Um, and IndyCar wins the title in his second year, loses it in his third year in IndyCar, and now has won it in his fourth and fifth years in IndyCar. The guy is an absolute monster behind the wheel of that race car. And it's one of the reasons why like McLaren wanted him to go over to their IndyCar team. It's one reason why he has flirted with Formula One seats a diamond in the rough. One of those prospects where you're like, guys, oh, in super formula, is he actually going to be able to make it? Who knows at this point? Yeah, sometimes you got to take a shot on these guys because maybe they don't have the budget. Maybe they don't have, you know, exactly what you're looking for. 
uh, to the eye, but sometimes guys excel in certain cars and just need that confidence boost to get them to that point. And right now, Alex Pillow is the new Scott Dixon when it comes down to it. He's going to rewrite record books if he stays in IndyCar for his entire career. I mean, three championships in four years. We're looking at this guy being a six time champ in his first eight years in IndyCar as it's currently pacing. That would be absolutely insane. Who's he think he is? Jimmy Johnson, Scott Dixon. That's unheard of. And he's only 27 years old as well. He still has a solid decade easy in him uh before he you know maybe starts to look at retirement but i mean heck will powers in his 40s and he's still contending for championships still winning races so polo could have another 15 years and him easily if he wanted to regardless i think it's very cool that alex polo did go back to back that is a fun sports story um it's a guy that has been the absolute class of the indycar field for the last two years colton herta picked up his first ever indycar oval win on sunday when he won at nashville uh did a burnout polo game down did burnouts as well just cool scene all around um Nashville was an okay race. It sucks that they put on at the same time as the cup race because you're constantly like having to look back and forth between the two TVs there. But overall, solid race, solid season for IndyCar. Nothing um, I would say that really helped the growth of IndyCar came out of this season. Hoping for more from them in 2025 and then obviously 2026. Maybe they'll do something else with the schedule. Probably not. They'll talk about it, but not actually do it. Either way, let me know in the comments what you think about uh, racing on the last lap in, in NASCAR. Obviously, contact is still allowed. The McLaren rear wing, Alex Polo. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.